should match up with the two extrema, the one max, the one min. So let's take a look. We got this sucker graphed. You guys see that all right? Belly, do you? Thanks. Yeah, I think, okay, wait, that's cool. So here's the max. Let's see if it'll tell me. Yeah, look, what is that, what's that trying to be? Negative two thirds, right? Negative one sixty six six is negative two thirds. And this, of course, is three zero. That's three, that's the other critical point. Okay, I like it. So again, when you make your list of critical points, they don't have to all match to an extreme, a max or a min. There could be some that are just like resting for a second and then they keep going. In this case, it was a cubish. There's going to be two turning points that correspond to those two critical points we got. Okay, I like it. It might be. Now, now tell me. Let's kind of try to develop a test so I don't have to graph this every time. Why exactly is this a min? I like it. So it's going up, back in, up, back in. So if, as I move along the function, the slope here is, and then it becomes, so if the slope is negative on one side of a critical point and positive on the other side of the critical point, that must be a min. I like it. And of course, the opposite thing for the max, if it's going up to it and then down from it, that's obviously the top of the hill. That's the max. I like it. So let's formalize. Melanie, I'm sorry. You're like, dude, I should get paid money or grades or something. Thank you. So let's develop a test for this. Using the same thing. Let me use my one good pen. Okay. This, I think, is the last thing we'll do today. Okay. The first derivative test. This, hopefully, will feel very familiar to stuff you've already done in pre-calculus. So here's my first derivative outputs. Let's see. Let me put down negative 2 thirds, 3. I'm going to put a z on top of them. What does that z signify? That the first derivative is? Zero at those points. I like. This is where multiplicity really comes in handy. This shit is multiplicity. Well, how often did this root show up? Once. How often did this root show up? Once. So they both have odd multiplicity, which means they will go through their root. If this was squared. Would it change signs on either side? No, it would be positive on both sides. It would be like a parabola. It would touch the root. It wouldn't go through. Does this sound familiar? Through or touch, that was a big part of graphing in pre-capitals. So all I have to do is check one number. Do you guys see how there's no way in hell it could be positive and negative in here? What's the only way it can possibly change sign is if it goes through a root. It goes through it. These are my doors to get through the x-axis. So there's no way it could change signs unless it goes through one. So if I put a zero in, what do I get when I put a zero in? I get negative times positive. You guys see that? I don't give a shit what the number is. I just want to know, is it going down or is it coming up? Because that's exactly what we just noticed is happening for the min, for example. Right? So when I put a zero in, I get negative times positive is negative. So I know it's negative all through this whole region. And I know it changes signs here because the multiplicity is one for both of these. Plus, plus, then. If you don't trust me, put a four in. Positive times positive. Put a negative 18 billion in. 
negative times negative is positive, right? I don't care what the number is. All I care about is the sign. What does that mean then? What, is, what does this mean exactly? Me putting a plus up here. What does that mean about the function? Now, now bring that back down to, to even more basic language. That means the function is going up. So it's increasing from what to what? Negative two thirds. Or from, where else is it increasing? Three to infinity. And of course it's decreasing in between there. Right at these points, I don't include these points because what's happening right at these points, it's sitting there. Right? It's going, this goes up, then it goes down. What's it doing right at the top? It's sitting there for a second. It's got to turn around. It ain't going nowhere for a second. Not a second. Mm -hmm. That'd be weird. Uh, oh, okay. Now look, I can sketch a really, really rough sketch of this. Up, flat, down, flat, up. That is not good enough for the actual final sketch. When we get into the graphing part of chapter four, don't give me this Loch Ness Monster looking thing. It's not good enough. But it's a nice, and now I know the general shape of this graph is going to be this, and we know that's true. It's a lot skinnier than I'm letting it be, right? But oh well, this is a rough sketch. So what's that mean about negative two-thirds? That is the location of a max, because it goes up to it and down from it. So the max is negative two-thirds, whatever the hell you get when you put negative two-thirds in. And the min is 3, 0. I like it. That's why this thing that a lot of you guys just kind of like didn't want to get to or didn't get to or just forgot all about, these so flippin' important to piece together the leftover shit. Because that's a whole other critical point that you don't want to lose. A possible turning point for this thing. I think that's enough for today. I'm going to let you guys out a bit early. Um, next time we'll have a little, uh, we'll finish up 401. I've got a handout going over all the types of problems you'll see in 401. We might get a little into 42.